All right. Hello and welcome everybody to another physics video lecture. Today we are going to be talking about component forces. All right, let's jump into it. Okay, so in this picture here, all right, I'm asking you what force is pulling up on this sweet dog's leash. As I'm sure you remember from last class, that force is tension, right? Tension is the force found in ropes, cables, chains, straps, okay? Anything that's suspending something else, right? Now this force is different from the ones that we've been adding and subtracting because it's not going straight up, uh, it's not completely vertical, and it's not going straight over, it's not completely horizontal, right? It's at an angle. So what we're gonna look at today is the same thing that we saw with velocities. If we have a force that's at an angle, okay, in order to calculate it, we know that if part of that force is pulling the, the leash up and part of that force is pulling the leash over. And much like with velocity, we have names for that. We call the vertical component the Y component of the force, and we call the horizontal component the X component. Same as we saw with velocity, same as we saw with graphs, okay? So you'll hear me say this again, but this going up is gonna be FY, and this going over is going to be Fx, okay? So to find this, we got to break it down into these two. Um, this is exactly like we saw before. Um, the example is, is if you have a force that is going northwest, part of that force is going north, part of it is going west. Similarly, if you're going northeast, part of that force is going up, and part of that force is going over to the right. All right, so just real quick, hopefully you guys remember a phrase, a magical world called, a word called Sokotoa, probably from ninth, 10th grade, whenever you took geometry. And here's what Sokotoa means. If you have a right triangle, you can use these magic words to remember the sine, cosine, and tangent of that triangle and how to find them. Okay, so remember you have a right triangle. The right angle is obviously 90 degrees. And if you're trying to find this angle right here, which has this little shape, it looks like a, a Pepsi sign. This is called theta. It just means angle, okay? If you want to find this angle here, you take so, sine is opposite in hypotenuse. So here's the angle, here's the opposite side, and the hypotenuse is the long side. You divide this length, the opposite, by this length, the hypotenuse, that's your sine. Here, if you want to find the cosine, you take a, C-A-H, the adjacent side, and divide it by the hypotenuse. And we're not using the tangent today, but that's toa, opposite over adjacent. And this is the magic of Soka Toa. All right. So how does this work and what we're going to use it for? Now, before, we were looking at forces at 90 degrees to each other. What does that mean? It means that the forces were either going straight vertically, okay, or straight horizontally. They were either going just up and down or side to side. And to add these forces is super easy, okay? If the forces are going in the same direction, like here, you got 100 newtons and 150 newtons, and you're going in the same direction, you just add them up. And if they're going in opposite directions, like this one's 150 and this one's 100, you subtract them. 150 minus 100 gives you 50. And the blue arrow is bigger, so that force is going to go to the right. Same thing if they're going up and down. Super, super easy. Today, we're going to see how to add forces if the angles are not at 90 degrees to each other. Okay? And this is how we do it. All right, so we have, again, this total force here. This is the direction, like, think about this like the dog's leash. It's getting pulled up and over. So the two components that make up this force are an X component, we call that our uh, horizontal component, and Fy, which is our vertical component. Now, here are the two equations that we're gonna remember, okay? But I'm gonna show you how we get them, just so you understand. So remember, we said that if you are looking to find, let's start with the sine. The sine of an angle is equal to, right, the opposite, so here's your angle, the opposite 
which is this side right here. Here's the angle, so we've got opposite, not touching, which is Fy, divided by the hypotenuse, which here we're calling F. Everybody see that? Opposite divided by uh, hypotenuse, okay? So, okay? So, if we break this down, and if we want to get this Fy by itself, this is division, so we do the opposite of division, we multiply. And I want to multiply by the bottom of the fraction, so that gives me F, that's our total force. These cancel out, and this gives me Fy equals the total force times the sine of the angle. Fy equals the total force times the sine of the angle. Isn't that easy? Similarly, if I replace the sine with the cosine, in fact, I'll do the whole thing, so the cosine of an angle is not. So it is adjacent. Okay, so here's your angle. This is adjacent. Adjacent just means next to. So here's your angle. This is the side that's next to it, divided by your hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is my x component, and my hypotenuse is still my total force. Again, if I want fx by itself, I have to do the opposite of division. That's multiplication. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. f divided by f is 1. And this gives me the force in the x direction is equal to the total force times the cosine of the angle. Now, do you need to remember how to get these, uh, how to derive these equations? Uh, not necessarily. It is helpful if you forget them. But the easier way to remember these, and this is how I do it, is I use this. The letter X comes before the letter Y in the alphabet, right? Well, the letter C comes before the letter S in the alphabet. So X goes with C, Y goes with S, right? X is before Y, C is before S. And little tricks like that make this way easier. Okay, so these are the only two equations we're looking at today. So now all you gotta do is know how to use them. So let's look at some examples. All right, example number one. It is asking what is the horizontal component of this force? So step one, we gotta remember what horizontal means. Okay, horizontal obviously means the x component. All right, this is horizontal, so we're looking for the x component. Remember, x comes before y, so c comes before s. So we're looking for the, oh, oh you know what I did? Okay, hopefully this will pop back on in just a second. That's embarrassing. All right, so how do we find this here? Well, we have to write down everything that we know about this angle. So luckily, I remember this, okay? As you'll see when this pops up, we have our total force in the x direction equals our total force, which was 300 newtons, times the cosine of the angle. Remember, this little Pepsi symbol here means angle, and if I remember correctly, the angle here was 35 degrees, okay? Hopefully this will come back on in just a second. Maybe. There we go. Okay. Ah, 37. So close. All right. So our total force was 300. All right. And our angle is 37 degrees. So now, barring any more technical difficulties, I'm going to go over to my calculator, which I have right here. Okay. And I'm going to enter these numbers. Okay. So to do this, this is just my Google calculator. I'm gonna go 300, the total force, times the cosine of 37. So how do we put that in? You hit cos, and then you put in your angle, which is 37. 300 times the cosine of 370 is equal to 239.59, which will round up to Fx equals 239.6. This is a force, so we measure it in newtons. That's it. What we found here 
is that the force going in the x direction is 239.6 newtons. That's how much force is pulling it east or to the right. Okay. So let's do another one. What if we want to find the vertical component of the force? All right. Well, remember, vertical means we're looking for Fy. So that means we take the total force. Y comes after X. S comes after C. So we take the sine of the angle. So again, same thing. We take the total force, which is 300. Multiply that by the sine of 37. Go back over here. Kaboom. You can do it. Boom. There we go. All right, so I'm going to clear this. Another thing you have to make sure, if you're using this Google calculator, you see where it says rad and degrees? If you forgot, this means radians and degrees. We are working in degrees. So you got to make sure that this does not say rad. you got to make sure it says dang right there. Okay? That's the default, so you should be okay. But make sure this says degrees. So again, 300 is my total force times the sine sin of 37 equals 180.5 newtons. Okay? Which is cool. That's our correct answer. So that means that the up version of this force is 180.5, and the Fx version of this force is 239.6. Okay? If you take these, right, and you did uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, 239.6 times uh, 180.5 squared, this squared plus this squared, you take the square root of that, you get 300. Pretty easy? Too easy? Too difficult? Let's do another one. All right. So now we're going in the opposite direction. That doesn't matter. We don't care. Okay. I'm looking for the y component of this force. That means my vertical component, Fy, is equal to the total force. Y comes after x. So we're going to use the sine of the angle. My total force is 1,000 times the sine of my angle, and my angle to the, uh, the, the ground is 60 degrees. Okay. Again, back, clear this out, get that out of here. Okay, so I take my total force, which is 1,000, I multiply it by the sine of 60, and that equals 866. So my Fy is equal to 866 newtons. Let's just go ahead and find the Fx because I'm going to do the same thing here. To find Fx, we're going to take the total force, which is 1,000, and multiply that by the cosine of the angle, which again is 60. Okay, so here's Fy, here's Fx. I'm going to use the same calculator to type in the same thing. Go back. Bum, 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 bum. There we go. 1,000. Instead of the sine, we use the cosine to find the horizontal component or the x component. Boom. Equals 500. Okay, so again, here is my x, here is my y. And as I told you before, if we do this, and if I go 500 squared plus 866 squared, and I, that equals a very large number. If I take the square root of this, which was 9999956, or 999,956, the square root of that is 1,000. Trigonometry doesn't lie. Math always works. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so we just found the x component and the y component of the force. The last thing I want to show you 
is that on occasion you may see, I'm going to skip that one. Uh, for this one, you would do the same thing, except the angle is going down. We don't care. It would be the same thing. You just use this total force, which is 60 newtons and 21 degrees. If you have an object that is falling at an incline, things look a little bit different, right? Here's your force of gravity going straight down. If you wanted to find either what we call the parallel force, that's this force right here, that is parallel to the ramp, going in the same direction as the ramp, okay? You would use the sine of the angle. Why? Well, because you gotta look at it like this. You gotta look at it sideways, right? So here, if you're trying to find this line and you're using this degree, you would use this side, which is the opposite side, right? Here's your angle, here's your right triangle, but it's shaped weirdly. So here's your angle. Here's now your total force, which is the force of gravity, okay? Here's your angle. So to find the parallel force, the one going down the ramp, you would use the opposite side. Opposite divided by hypotenuse is sine. It's just instead of being like this, you take it and you go and now the triangle's facing that way. Similarly, if you're trying to find the perpendicular force, which is going this way, which we never, ever, ever really find, you use the cosine, right? Because again, here's your triangle, and cosine here, this is your adjacent divided by your hypotenuse. You're just twisting the triangle, okay? So one example with this is find the component force of gravity here. So again, gravity is going straight down. We are looking for this force right here that is parallel okay, with the ground. Can I draw that a little better? I bet I can't. Let's get it actually parallel. Better. So we're looking for this force right here. All right. All right. So if I'm looking at this as my hypotenuse, okay, that means this is going to be my triangle right here. Here is my angle. Okay. So here is the hypotenuse. Excuse me. Drown the home. Okay. So I want this side right here. And then these two come together. Let me see how this looks again. There we go. These two angles are the same. This angle right here. And that angle right there. Okay. Yeah, so this is your angle right there is the same as this angle right here, which seems weird, okay? So this is your degrees right here. This is what you're looking for, is this part of it. So again, just kind of flip it around, because it does look sort of weird. So it is going down. Everybody see that? Um, and it's gonna be on the opposite side of that. So instead of making your triangle going this way, Right. Uh -huh. We have to draw that angle right there. Right. So we take perpendicular force here and draw this. That's our triangle right there. Right. So we want the opposite side. This one right here. Make these the same size. So you can see them. Boom. This even takes me a second. This one's kind of weird. Um, so we want this angle right here. So F Y equals the total force times the sine of the angle, right? Because we have, you know, we're looking for this. Here's our angle. This is 35 degrees. Not going to explain that as some geometry. Just trust me on this one. And so we want the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So our total force is 16 newtons. Our angle is 35. Go back to our calculator. 16 times the sine of 35 equals 9.2. And that's how you find that. This is a big dog problem, and it is rare that we see that. But just in case you ever find it, just remember that ramps, you're always going to try to find this, this one right here, and it's always going to be the sign. So if you ever need to do that, that's where you're coming at it. All right, guys, that's it for today. So again, all you gotta remember, the big takeaway here is right here. 
If you're looking for the vertical component, you use the sine, that's called Fy, okay, the force going up and down. And if you're trying to find the horizontal component, that's called Fx, it's going to the side. All right, guys, have a great day.